this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to play the night cage on Sovereign. I'm Danny, Sovereignty's Community Manager. If you haven't already, I need you to pause this video to download and create a free Sovereignty account. You can do that by going to Sovereignty.com install. There is a link in the description and check the video link here if you have any questions about that process. Also in the description, you'll find timestamps to other parts of this video. So if there's something specific you're looking for, you can go ahead and jump ahead. But we are gonna click ready and load into the game. If you have questions about how to create a table to start a game on Sovereignty, I've linked that video here as well. In the night cage, each prisoner has only a candle to aid them in their escape. As players move, new pathways are revealed while old ones disappear and are consumed in darkness forever. So every move will require thoughtful consideration and collective strategy because this is a co-op game. So if you can see here, Sovereignty is an entirely rules enforced platform. It's gonna take care of all that setup for you. It's gonna take care of rules enforcement throughout the game as well. If you do have specific rules questions and wanna reference the rule book, you can always go ahead and click on this manual button up here and that rule book will open up for you. We are gonna finish setup and then launch into how to play this game. So I am going to randomize prisoner color and then I'm gonna go ahead and click start game. First, let's talk about how to win this game. All players need to collect a key, so you all need to be holding a key, and make it to a single gate tile in order to win. So let's take a peek at what these icons might mean. So here is what a key tile looks like, and here are one of the gate tiles. So there's gonna be multiple gate tiles that show up, but you all need to make it to the same one with your keys in order to win. Now, like in many co-op games, there is that way to win, but there are also many ways to lose. So in this game, you can lose by having all four gate tiles that have been lost. So if you can't make it to a gate because there are no more gates left, then you lose. If the prisoners cannot collect a key, so if the too many key tiles have been lost and it's not possible for everyone to get a key, you will lose. And the third way is if all the prisoners cannot bring their keys to one of the gate tiles before the darkness has taken over. So we can see this candle here currently has 74 tiles in it. Once all those tiles are gone, then we are in the final flickers. And if we are not able to make it to a gate tile before we end up losing all of our tiles, then the game will be over. So, Let's get started. I am going to be starting. So what every player is going to do to start is place their starting tile. Now we're playing a two player game. We are each, uh, we each have two different prisoners. So I have the red prisoner and the blue prisoner and Nate has the green and the yellow prisoner. So you get to move both prisoners. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my blue starting tile. All the starting tiles are the same. Once you place it, you can click the rotate by clicking on the buttons on the bottom of Sovereignty. Once you're happy with the orientation, you can go ahead and click place tile. Then what's going to happen is you are going to draw the number of tiles that have um, spots or have roads out of them. So in this example, there are two paths out of my tile. So I am going to draw two tiles and I'm going to draw them one at a time. So I'm going to zoom out here so you can see. Once you draw a tile, Sovereignty is going to hover it over here and then you get to choose where you want to place it. So I'm going to place that tile there and I'm going to draw my second tile. All right. And then all players are going to take their starting tile and then I'll pick you back up once we are a little bit more in the game. Now that we've all placed our starting tiles, we are going to move into each round. So on your turn, you're going to get an action, whether to move or to stay. Typically, you're going to want to move. If you stay, you can get some nerve tokens for that, and sometimes it might be beneficial, but for the most part, you're going to be moving on your turn, especially if you are standing on a cracked tile. If you stay on a cracked tile, you're actually gonna fall through the maze. Don't worry, that doesn't mean you lose or anything. You're just gonna pop up on the edge of the board. Since we're talking about the board, let's talk a little bit about how this board works. This board is a wraparound board. So if you exit the board on the right hand side, you're just going to show up on the same row, but on the left hand side. Similar to if you go off the board on the bottom, you're just going to pop up on the top. 
So let's move and take our action. So I'm going to move up here. Now, that other tile went away because any tile that you are not orthogonally next to, if there's not a candle orthogonally next to it, it's going to fall through. So I moved away from that tile, making it more than one spot away from me. So it fell through the board and it's going to go stack up here. Sovereignty keeps track of how many you've lost and how many are there. So now what I do, once I've moved on to a new tile, similar to with our starting tile, there are two exits to this tile that I'm standing on. So I need to draw two tiles. Let's hope we don't draw a wax eater, but if we do, that's a perfect time to explain what a wax eater is. All right, let's see what we get here. Okay, I'm gonna place this tile here and I'm gonna rotate it so that I have some connections to some other tiles. When you place a tile, you have to be able to walk through that tile so I'm not able to place it where the or the pathways have to connect so i'm not able to place it where i can block off an aisle now i could turn it this way and block off this one if i wanted to but eh, maybe maybe i'll do that sure i'll do that okay and then i'm going to draw another tile okay we actually just drew a wax eater so perfect timing to talk about wax eaters when you have a wax eater if somebody moves onto or out of the column or row that the wax eater is in, the wax eater is going to get triggered. So the reason actually why I placed this tile here, this direction, instead of connecting it to the red candle, is because the wax eaters cannot go through the walls. So like, for example, the pathway turns up here, so the wax eater is not able to get to the red candle. So it's okay, it won't sense that the red candle moves and we'll see how that works once it's red's turn. Okay, so I'm gonna place, and we're fine, the wax eater doesn't know I'm there yet because I haven't moved, so I'm not gonna get attacked yet. Now it's red's turn. I'm gonna move right here. Now, like I said, see how the wax eater did not get triggered because it wasn't able to see red because it was blocked off and there was a gap here between this tile and the wax eater. So we're good. This is a good scenario. So it's red's turn, same thing. We're gonna draw the number of tiles and place them onto the board. So on your turn, you're gonna continue on that same process. You're going to move one space along a passage onto a connected tile. Only one player can be on each tile except gates. If you're ever on a gate, you can be on gates with other players. You're gonna only illuminate the passages that are orthogonally next to you. You're gonna draw tiles, place them, and then any that are not illuminated are gonna get removed. So that's how a turn typically goes. Now I mentioned at the beginning, you are able to choose to stay. So I'm gonna show you what that might look like. All right, it's my next turn. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like to stay. Now here's a little card that every player has, a little reference card that kind of walks you through everything and what everything means. So on your turn, when your candle is lit, you can move one space, which we've been doing, or you can stay, which means you can discard a tile and gain one nerve. Sometimes the discarding the tile is not a good thing because if you discard a key or a gate, it could not be helpful for you. But you are gonna gain a nerve. So let's talk about nerves for just a second. You can spend a nerve to move again. So typically you can only move one space. If you wanted to move another, you could spend a nerve. You can also block. So when a monster attacks, it would typically discard three of the tiles from that candle that I showed you at the beginning. But if you choose to block with a nerve, you only discard two tiles. You can also choose to charge, which is move onto and then through a monster tile, taking all penalties from the attack, but scrambling to the tile beyond it. So you still get hit, but that's okay. Maybe that's your strategy, you wanna do that. Or you could sustain. During the final flickers, so once we've run out of all the tiles, that's when final flickers are. We are not close to that yet. But once we are in final flickers, we can ignore removing an illuminated tile after your turn. So when you run out of tiles on your the candle that's sitting here in the final flickers, you can decide to 
not discard one of the tiles. So let's say you're trying to get to a gate at the end and you need the tiles in order to get to the gate. That's a scenario where you might want to save your nerve and use it then so that you can actually get to the gate that you want to get to. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to stay. So I'm going to choose to stay. Okay, and I'm going to confirm. And I'm not going to move and the monster won't attack. Now that's an okay tile to get rid of. I didn't lose a key. I didn't lose a gate. So that's all right. So I also gained a nerve, which I didn't show you what those look like. Those are these tokens right here. So now I have two of them. You can only store up to two of them. So keep that in mind. You can't store more than that. And I'm going to end my turn. Just like that. So that's what it looks like to stay. So now it's Nate's turn. I'm actually going to show you what it looks like to fall through one of the tiles. So Nate is actually going to jump into the pit. I wouldn't necessarily say this is the best strategy at this point, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like so that you know when you're playing. So Nate is going to fall through and then Nate will get to choose whether to place the green candle either up here, over here, over here, or down here. So you get to choose where in the row and the column that you want to place. So on the edges still. So Nate is going to choose, we'll see. Uh, okay, so the candle falls through and then over here. So that might be a strategy if you're trying to escape maybe a wax eater or you want to get across the board a little bit faster. It's okay to jump through those. So now it's Blue's turn again. So it's my turn again. I'm going to show you again. This is not a scenario I would typically do because you don't normally want to get hit by the wax eaters, but I'm going to show you for the sake of example how this works. So I'm going to move. Now when you move in the row or the column of the wax eater, it's going to get activated. So I'm going to move here and the wax eater is going to get activated and attack me. I'm going to confirm for the sake of example that that's what I want to do. I can use a nerve to block, so sure. I will use one nerve, so that means only two tiles are discarded instead of three. Great, none of them were keys or gates, so that's great. So the wax eater goes away after it's activated, and now you can see I don't have any light on my candle. So what that means on my turn is I'm going to just jump onto tiles, and I don't know what they are. So that could be another wax eater. It could be dangerous. If you ever lose your light on your candle and you are orthogonally next to one of your teammates, you are able to relight your candle and it will automatically do that for you. So now it's yellow's turn and I'll show you how it, you would typically want to avoid a wax eater. So yellow is choosing to move. Now, whenever you move in the row and column, whether into that row or out of that row, that's when that wax eater gets activated. So if yellow moves down here, the wax eater is going to just get discarded. Nobody gets attacked. And that's typically how you'd want to encounter a wax eater. You don't want to get hit by them typically, unless maybe that's your strategy. I don't know. Now we're back to Green's turn. So remember Green is over here now. So now Nate is going to choose anywhere in that row to place the green candle. So that, oh no, but this is a terrible scenario. Now the wax eater, so we didn't, now that is negative to this. Now Nate is not gonna know what tile gets drawn. So Nate is going to land directly on a wax eater, which is, you know, not good. <laughs> Because we are candles and we have candles and wax eaters like candles. So that's not good. Nate is going to use one to block. Now we did lose a gate tile. Now there are three left in the stack here. So we're still okay. But it is not a great one to lose. Now we got two of us that are lights out. Which is not great. But that's okay. We'll be fine. There we go. Nate drew it. A gate tile so we got we got a gate tile but unfortunately Nate had to discard that so that's a bummer because <laughs> Nate's lights out so none of the tiles around Nate can be lit same with the blue one only the one that they are on is lit otherwise they fall through because when your lights out you don't get to light the surrounding area so you can see on my screen now, I'm blue. So I am lights out. Let's take a look at our reference card just to look at what lights out means. So when you are lights out on your turn, you move one space. 
You're too panicked, so you cannot stay. That's not an option. During lights out, you may spend one nerve to move again. You can stay, um, but no nerve is gained. So you have to spend a nerve in order to stay, but you don't even gain a nerve from staying. So if you want to, you can. Maybe yeah, maybe Nate should have done that. I'm not sure. You can block still and you can charge or you can sustain when you're in final flickers too. Okay, so the new goal is to light the candles so that we aren't just moving on to tiles that we don't know what they are. So I'm going to draw this tile and hope it's not bad. <laughs> we're going to hope for a key. This is what we're hoping for. Oh, I drew a gate, which is good. Now, my goal might be to try to stay, but I don't have anyone that's able to come light my candle yet. So let's, let's think about what we want to do here. All right, I will pick you back up. I'm going to hope I get to final flickers. These are my goals. Or maybe I'll win before then. We'll see. But I'll pick you up towards the end of the game so you can see how the ending kind of looks and how you might win this game. Let's hope I can win and I hope I can get there. Okay, so we've made it to final flickers and we're all very close to the end. So we're going to hope that we can make this happen. So final flickers again happens once you've ran out of all the tiles over here. So we have zero left to play. Therefore, we would have to start discarding some of the tiles. Now it's yellow's turn right now. Yellow has two of the nerves. So I think yellow is going to choose to sustain so that we don't have to discard any right now. And we're gonna hope for the best and see if we can make this happen. Now, it looks like green is next and unfortunately green cannot move. Green has to stay, it looks like, because green, if green moves here, then green gets stuck. So, okay, so now it's blue's turn. Blue is going to move onto the gate. Move. All right, and you'll see what it looks like to sustain or not. Now, I don't have any extra nerves because I had to use them all during the game, so I have to discard this one. And I'm gonna end my turn, and I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this. And then green is gonna obviously move on to this tile here. Woo! Very scary stuff. Okay. And then green is going to have to sustain so that we can have some extra things here blue is going to stay oh shoot i don't know if we could do it maybe we're going to run into the same scenario we just had let's see zoom in here okay end turn now it's red red's going to stay mm, i gotta get rid of this one Oh no, and it's yellow's turn. Yellow has to stay, but yellow doesn't have any yellow doesn't have any nerve left, so yellow has to get rid of the gate, which means we lose. Oh my goodness. The button says lose. All right. We were so close. We're so close, which is why I love this game because it there's so many so close games. It just you just want to keep playing more. And that is the Night Cage on Sovereignty. Now, this is such a great game. It can have a lot of challenge. It is so rewarding when you're able to escape this prison with only your candles. And I hope you have a great time. The Night Cage is from Smirk and Dagger, Smirk and Laughter. It plays one to five players. So invite your family and friends to play with you or go ahead and check out that solo mode. It plays in about 60 minutes. If you have any comments or questions, please post in the comments below. And if you have any questions about the Sovereignty app camera controls, I've linked that video here. Also check the description just in case I missed anything. I'll be sure to post it there. And if you've liked this video or found it helpful, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Happy gaming!